Hello friends. So what we're going to do tonight is uh, run through the Fibonacci sequence uh, algorithm. Now there's two different ways, well there's several different ways to solve this, but there's two main ideas on how to solve something like this. I should Fibonacci, uh, do the Fibonacci algorithm. So there's a couple of ways to solve this, but there's two main ideas. One is an iterative way and one is a recursive way. I'll show you how to do both. The iterative way is a lot more code to write. The recursive way is far less code, but way much harder to understand um, um, conceptually. All right, so basically Fibonacci sequence is fairly simple. It's uh, if you start out with a zero and then one, you'll add them together and then you'll get one. And then you'll add one and one together and you'll get two. And you'll add two and one together and you'll get three. And you'll add three and two together and you'll get five. And you'll add five and three together and you'll get eight. Eight and five, 13, 13 and eight, 21, 21 and 13, who knows. So it just kind of spirals out. It's actually a spiral uh, if you graph it out, I think. I believe. Not a mathematician. I actually suck at math. Anyways, so the uh, how would we go about doing that? So in the iterative way, we would do it like this. Let's just code it out and we'll explain it as we go. Uh, you'll take in a number. And that number will represent how far you want the Fibonacci sequence to go out. So if you pass, that, pass in 10, it'll return the 10th Fibonacci number in the, in the sequence, right? So first thing we'll have to do is make an array. And this is where we'll hold our Fibonacci sequence and we'll populate the array with a zero and one to start out because we need a starting point. Then we'll make a const for what we call this. We'll call this one, well, we'll stay away from that for right now. So we have an array and uh, in our array right now we have zero and one. So the first solution will be pretty easy and then I'll step it up in complexity. So we'll go four, let i equal 2 because we have 0 and 1 right here. As long as i is less than or equal to num, we want to increment i by 1. So just an old school for loop. And then we'll set up some variables in here. We'll go a, we'll let a equal r at i minus 1. And then we'll let b equal r at i minus 2. So we have those set up right now. And so what we want to do is push into R, R dot push, uh, A plus B. And then right here we just want to return R at uh, num. Right? So let's console log this and see what we got. And we called it fib in it for or fib it for iterative. And we'll see what the fifth term in the Fibonacci sequence is. Uh, and I'll just comment this out real quick. Okay, so this should work. Let's go to node. And let's node fib. Okay, so five is the fifth term. Let's do the, I don't know, the tenth term. Okay, it's 55, but it's kind of random. You don't really know how you're getting there. The numbers just seem random almost. So an interviewer might ask you, like, oh, hey, that's all well and good. You can get that. But how would you uh, put that and map that to some kind of, like, hash table that we could see, you know, all of the numbers in sequence up into a specific point? So that might be, like, a follow-up question. If you get this, they might ask you to do something like that to step up the complexity. So let's do that. Let's make a mapper. Or we'll call it uh, – let's make an object. We'll call it mapper. And then we'll have a counter, and we'll start that out at zero. So after our initial for loop, what we'll want to do is make another for loop. But this one, we can use a different syntax. We can do let lm uh, in r. OK, so all we would have to do to map this is to go mapper at counter is equal to r at lm. And then we would increment the counter, oh, counter uh, by one every time. And then here, instead of returning this, we would just return mapper. 
right? So now let's see what happens. Okay, cool. So we have, now we can see up until 55, if we wanted the 7th, 13. One the fourth, three. So as you can see, if we do it a little bit further out, let's do like 50. It spirals out exponentially at some point. I mean, they get really big really fast. So da, 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 just from 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 zero to 10, you get 55. And from 10 to 20, you jump up to 6,000. And from 20 to 30, you jump up to 800,000. And from 30 to 50, I mean, it gets to be this hulking number down here. So that's the iterative way to do that problem. Conceptually pretty easy once you know what you're trying to do. Now the recursive way, this is a straight almost memorization thing because it is really confusing as to how to understand it. So we'll pass in a num right here and the amount of code is like really small. So we'll just say if n is less than two, we'll just return n. Otherwise, will return uh, fib uh, rec for recursive n minus one plus fib rec n minus two. And let's just console log that and see what we get. We'll do it to the 10th. We want the 10th term. That should be uh, 55. Yeah, it should be 55. So let's run that, and we get 10. Okay, something's wrong here. <laughs> uh, in less than two, return in return fib rec. Maybe I have to do this. I don't think I should, but okay. Hmm. Let me figure this out real quick. Fib rec, fib rec. In minus one plus in minus two, return in. If n is less than two, hmm. hmm. Oh, I just put Jesus Christ. <sighs> that is got to call the function, you know. Okay, so this should work. And it doesn't it in because I didn't call it in. I call it num. Whatever, man. Coding sucks. Cool. We get 55. So if we do both of them at 10, and you see how much more code the iterative solution is, and we run them both. And cool. They both 10 for 55 there and 55 here. Now. This one, you can understand what's going on uh, intuitively. I mean, if you code it all, you can kind of get it. You got two for loops, you're going over an array, you're mapping that array to a hash table, and then you're printing out the hash. On this one, this is uh, tough <laughs> to try and figure this out. So basically, let's walk through it. Let's say that you have, you're passing in fib 10. First go around, it's going to go, if n is less than 2. Well, it's not less than 2, so it's going to return n. Well, it's not going to run this bit of code because it's not less than 2. This is our catch for to get out of basically what would be an infinite loop. So it doesn't run that code. It runs this code. It's going to return fib n minus 1 plus fib n minus 2. Well, n minus 1 is 9, and n minus 2 is 8, neither of which are less than 2. So those are going to run minus one is seven and so on and so forth all the way down until n is going to be less than one and then basically through building out a stack it's going to add up all of what those ends are what they uh what they compile down to and it's going to give you 55. you can read up on it uh it's like i said this right here, I don't really know if anyone who doesn't know how to write this out from memory would be able to figure this out on the spot. This is almost a, if someone says, hey, write the Fibonacci sequence recursively, that's almost a dog whistle to like, hey, do you program? Because this is a very like well-known sequence in the recursive, like uh, the Fibonacci and the uh, factorial are very much known in the recursive programming world. They're... Uh, I'll do the factorial real quick, if I can remember it, shit, factorial of uh, 
in. So all the factorial is, is if, we, if we're passed in 5, all the factorial is is 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5. And that will give you the factorial of that. So the way that you would solve that iteratively is the same way. So if n is less than 2, uh, that's our catch. We'll return n return. Otherwise, we want to return uh, n times factorial n minus 1. So, let me comment this out. And I'm kind of getting off topic here, but hey, what the hell. Let's go down here. Comment that out. Uh, we want the factorial of 5. Now before, uh, I almost did it again. Now, before we do that, let's go into node real quick. Let's do 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5. We get 120. Because 1 times 2 is 2, times 3 is 6, times uh, 6 times 4 is tw uh, 24. 6 times 4 is 24. 24 times 5 is 120. Okay, so this should be... 120 is what this should return if I did that right and I haven't haven't done that in a while so node fib unexpected unexpected number let's see fucking errors man Okay, cool. So we got 120. Uh, so that works. So what this is doing is you pass in the 5. It says if n is less than 2, which it's not, it will go 5 times factorial minus 1. Well, the factorial minus 1, it doesn't know what the n is, so it's going to run it again. 5 will be 4 now. 4 less than 2, no it's not. Gets back down here, it'll be 4 times whatever this is, but this is not known yet, so it runs it again, goes to three, goes to two, goes to one. Once it's all the way at one, all of those ends on the stack know what they represent now, and it just multiplies them up as it goes. It's confusing, and what's going on behind the scene is uh, very interesting, to say the least. But if you know the factorial algorithm recursively, if you know the... It, the recursive solution for the Fibonacci sequence. If you if you can talk about those a little bit, that goes a really long way. And if you can solve it in an iterative way and talk about the time complexity in it, that's also good. So this video went really long, but you know, a lot of useful information there. So hope it helped. Take it easy.